Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Today is 4th of October and uh, we are going to discuss the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion in this session. In this video, we are going to discuss all the articles of the Hindu newspaper which are relevant for our examination and we will take articles along with the background as well as the detailed forward. Fine. Now, I would also like to tell you that you can download explainer notes of this particular session from our telegram channel. Link for telegram is given in description box in YouTube. Now, first of all, let's see overview of entire newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are actually important in the today's newspaper. So, here we have Delhi edition. Now, the first article that we have here, the article is talking about Nobel Prize in Physics that has been given. Yesterday, we have discussed Nobel Prize in Medicine. So, today we will discuss the Nobel Prize in Physics. So, over next few days, these uh, day by day Nobel Prizes will be awarded. So, we'll take this particular article. Then moving on, news click founder arrested under UAPA, okay, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Now, there are two angles that have opened up in this particular direction. Opposition says that deliberately ruling government is targeting the uh, media in order to muzzle the free speech, okay. Uh, however, for exam point of view, nothing important is given in this article. So, we'll not go into too much of detail, we'll be skipping it, okay. Modi says he turned down KCR's request to join NDA in 2020. Again, political article, not important for examination. Then moving on, guys, we have these advertisements in the city section, the regional issues, etc. are there and the, these advertisements. So, nothing much important is given. Okay, moving on, again, again, guys, there is uh, the regional political articles, etc. Okay, so we will directly reach to editorial section because still editorial, nothing relevant has been there. Now, in editorial, the first article talks about the triumph of Vachati over a hostile state. We'll see briefly this particular article. Now, guys, this particular article shot in the arm, success of COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. Okay. Now, there is this one particular article and a trouble with the Nobel for mRNA COVID vaccine. Now, two things I want to tell you and uh, please listen very carefully. Yesterday, if, uh, yesterday we have discussed the Nobel Prize in Medicine that has been given for mRNA COVID vaccine. Okay, we have discussed that what is this messenger technology, how this kind of a vaccine technology actually happens to be more safe and effective. Okay, all these things we have discussed. Now, this particular article, the trouble with the Nobel for mRNA COVID vaccine, it is going and doing a kind of a very deep analysis that when Dr. Kerico, Dr. Weissman, they started working together, find where they met, okay, what were their different, different, okay, uh, 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 when they worked together, okay, uh, how many grant, how much grant was given to them, okay, then the license was given to Moderna and Pfizer, all that thing is given. Now, so much of hairline details are not at all important for our examination because A, they are not asked, B, it will not be needed for your examination and you will not be able to keep it in your mind. So, I will not suggest you to go in this particular article again. However, if you have not seen yesterday's newspaper, please watch it. Okay. Then, all why yeah, for the cup. Okay. So, article is talking about the ICC World Cup. Okay. Then, moving on, we have this article using AI for audit technique. We'll take this particular article for the examination. Okay. Uh, then, uh, fixing the rot in the cooperative sector. Okay. Societies and urban banks are controlled by politicians with no domain expertise. Okay, so basically guys, here the article is talking about that how in the Kerala, many of the political leaders, okay, they are using it. Now again guys, in article, exam specific substance is not there. Find the specific details of the political leaders, political parties and their allegations on them. They are being discussed. Okay, moving on, moving on guys, uh, then coming to text and context, the shutdown of Afghan embassy, we'll take this particular article. Then after that, uh, we have this article here. Now, uh, this article, uh, Nagorno Karabakh standoff ended. So, basically, guys, this article is talking about the standoff between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, fine, this standoff was on Nagorno Karabakh region. Now, this particular standoff has ended. Fine. So, what has happened? So, Azerbaijan has taken the full control over the region, and Armenians they have agreed to disband. Okay. Then, moving on, uh, here we have one article on circular migration. Okay, now this is a good article, fine, with respect to urbanization and migration, GS paper number one, we are going to take up this entire article also. Then further moving on after that, India block, fine, so this India block says the opposition. 
so india block takes exception of targeting media outlet fine nothing much important is given media bodies slam news click search call it attempt to muzzle free media by the government okay so moving on in this particular direction guys uh, we so largely nothing much important has been given these tenders political statements by the opposition party because of this raids that have been made and all such kind of a things largely are contained here okay moving on in this particular direction here we have one particular article uh, icmr project to accelerate cancer screening measures we'll take this particular article for exam now there is a world bank report on the swachh bharat mission we'll take this particular article also after that guys uh, uh, heavy death reporting in two maharashtra hospitals so we have seen that in 24 hours there were 24 deaths that happened okay trudeau says canada not trying to escalate a diplomatic crisis it is because now the clarification is being given by the canada because recently prime minister made us allegation against india that india had played a role in killing of a khalistani leader okay then uh, however uh, one more thing you are not really required to track these statements every day okay so no no need to go too much in that then further moving on on world page so here we have one article after election muizu repeats his promise of ousting indian forces so recently elections have been have, have been conducted in maldives and uh, two three days back we have seen that article and i have told you that there is one dimension that will open up is that now uh, the mr muizu who has been elected as the president he has been the supporter of india out campaign or the political party which he belongs to was a supporter of india out campaign okay we'll take this particular article and we'll see implications of this particular thing as what has happened then further moving on armenia's parliament votes to join icc straining ties with ally russia okay then uh, trio wins nobel prize in physics we'll take this particular article then on business page manufacturing pmi slips to 5 month low okay one thing guys understand this particular thing that for example here uh, purchasing manager index uh, has uh, slid down to 5 month low it has been given okay now there is one more data world bank keeps india's financial 24th growth forecast at 6.3% because of the reducing waning demand now one question comes that are you really required to track this particular article so understand this particular thing with a simple explanation that as we talk about the every month purchasing manager index now you will be writing your exam till the time you will be writing your exam these information and numbers will change so by that time no need to go and read it however the state of indian economy is an important article for example just two days back we have taken one article where we have seen that reserve bank of india's monthly bulletin report was released which provided this particular thing that household savings are going down and liabilities are increasing so we have done a detailed analysis of that particular thing so these articles for example reflect state of indian economy are important but every data giving you number about the pmi giving you month by month export import data gst collections not at all important okay world bank keeps india's growth forecast at 6.3% okay so basically guys these growth forecast are given by many agencies world bank many credit rating agencies give it but it depends on the prevailing economic condition of that particular time okay what is inflation at in this point of a time what is the demand what is the uh, what is employment rate and all such kind of a things however as economic conditions change these numbers data is also they do change they don't stay the same okay then moving on in this particular direction guys moving on in this particular direction airbnb helped add 920 million to india's gdp okay so airbnb is a platform on which people can host the guest okay suppose i have a house okay i can host people they can come and live my in my how home so this is the airbnb is business model okay then further moving on in this particular direction uh, outbound tourism to cross 15 billion dollar in 2023 so outbound tourism people of india who are going out for holidays okay business and all such kind of a things so outbound tourism is increasing particularly after the post pandemic recovery is now being going on and 15 billion dollar worth of outbound tourism will be carried okay then moving on we have the sports page okay uh, and guys in the last uh, let's see what is there in today's science page so uh, yes in today's science page if someone is interested in maths they should be solving problems anywhere so this is an interview with mr apurva khare who is an associate professor of mathematics and at iisc bangalore okay 
now uh, i have read this entire article so article is just talking about that what you should consider if you are pursuing the career in mathematics okay his life experiences etc okay uh, i have read article but it doesn't contains any important substance for our examination so i'll not recommend you to go in this particular article okay so this is guys all about the overview of the newspaper and now let's start a discussion of all these articles one by one in detail okay so this is the synoptic notes that you can download here in synoptic notes every day we take a gs quotation which can be used to complement our gs answers as well as essay so today we'll take quotation from peter drucker who says that the ultimate resource in economic development is people it is people not capital or raw material that develops an economy so most important asset of a nation is human resource and human resource development is most crucial to economic development human resource development takes in account the education level in people health of the people vocations vocations and skills that people know so investing in these particular things will develop human resource and by human resource economic development of a nation comes so this is the most important asset okay you can use this particular idea in gs paper number 2 as well as gs paper number 3 okay now taking up first article for today okay now so guys now the season of nobel prizes has just come and now every day one nobel prize will be awarded <coughs> yesterday we have taken one article where we discuss the nobel prize on medicine fine so the day before yesterday nobel prize on medicine was given yesterday nobel prize on physics has been given so we are reading it today now first of all before going on in this particular article some basic information about the nobel prizes we are going to take and then we'll go in this article now when we talk about the nobel prizes when we talk about the nobel prizes so nobel prizes are given in the memory of alfred nobel who was a swedish chemist who was a swedish chemist engineer and industrialist and was known for his invention of dynamite okay he was a wealthy person even yesterday i have given you one case study associated with his life that how when he was living an obituary by mistake was written by his name which led to a realization of uh, realization of alfred nobel that his invention of dynamite has led to so many of the deaths and therefore moral burden of these destruction has come on him so he wanted to he wanted to get rid of it and therefore he instituted the nobel prize so yesterday we have discussed it okay how we were moving on so alfred nobel in his memory nobel prizes are given one thing second thing guys originally the nobel prizes were given in five categories what are these five categories in which nobel prize were given physics chemistry physiology or medicine literature and peace however one sixth category got added in 1968 by the sveriges riksbank that is the central bank of sweden and sixth category was added that is nobel prize in economic sciences so today in six categories nobel prizes are given now when we talk about nobel prizes all the nobel prize except peace prize it is awarded at sweden however only one nobel prize that is nobel prize for peace it is given in norway so this is something that you need to know and the number of people of indian origin okay or the indians who got nobel prize that list has been given here you can just download synoptic notes and you can see their names from here okay now moving on so guys today we are going to discuss nobel prize in physics first of all let's understand that who had got nobel prize and then we'll try to understand in very basic things that for what thing this nobel prize has been given so see nobel prize has been given to three people and one more interesting fact i will uh, you should know nobel prize can be shared maximum by three people not more than three people okay maximum the nobel prize can be shared by three people so it has been given to francis pierre agostini hungarian austrian physicist frank cross and a french swedish physician n a l huyler n a l huyler so these three people have won the nobel prize in physics now why they have won the nobel prize in physics they have won the nobel prize in physics for development in the field of attoseconds attoseconds 
let's understand that what eto second is so we divide day in hours we divide hours in minute we divide minute in seconds okay so basically eto second is the denomination of a time and eto second okay so uh, basically as we divide day in hours hours in minutes in the same way a second is further subdivided in eto seconds a second is further subdivided in eto seconds now you will ask a question that as there are 60 seconds in one minute as there are 60 minutes in one hour how many eto seconds are there in one second so how many eto seconds are there so basically guys you see this particular thing that there are so many that you will simply be surprised and amazed by this when we talk about eto second it is one quintillionth of a second or one billionth of a nanosecond okay so these many eto seconds are there in one second and just to put in a simple analogy just to put in a simple analogy see earth was formed around 13.5 billion years ago earth was formed around 13.5 billion years ago so since 13.5 billion years ago the number of seconds that have been passed since then okay the number of seconds that have been passed since then that many eto seconds are there in one second that many eto seconds are there in one second so in short there are as many eto seconds in one second as there have been seconds since the universe birth okay so this number is ungraspable number is unfathomable okay so now understand this particular thing why these eto seconds okay or why the discovery of this eto seconds is important okay We'll understand this thing by the help of one simple analogy. First objective is that you should know what eto second is. Eto second is the subdivision of a second. Okay. And it is a really, really, really sub, very small subdivision of a second. How many eto seconds are there in one second? Okay. 1 into 10 minus 18. This is the number of eto seconds that are there in one second. Okay. Or now, suppose, suppose. I am standing here and I moved from this point to this point. Okay. Let's say when I moved from this point to this point, let's say I took one second to do that particular thing. Okay. I took one second from this point to reaching this point. Now, when we talk about atom, when we talk about atom, so first of all, in the nucleus of atom, okay, in the nucleus of atom, we have neutron. We have neutron which are negatively charged. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Neutron which are neutral, which have a neutral charge. Okay. We have protons. We have protons which have positive charge, which have positive charge. And then we have electrons. We have electrons. And these electrons have negative charge. So when we talk about the structure of an atom, so when we talk about the structure of an atom, there is electron negative charge, then there is a nucleus. With the nucleus, we have proton and we have neutron. Protons have positive charge and neutrons have neutral charge. Okay. Now understand this particular thing that these electrons they are spinning around the nucleus. Electrons are spinning around the nucleus. And these electrons are spinning at a very fast rate. They are spinning at a very fast rate. Okay. Now understand this particular thing that as electrons are spinning or revolving around the nucleus, what is the speed that they are revolving? What is the speed that they are revolving? Now understand this particular thing. When I changed my position from this point to this point, it took me one second. It took me one second. But electrons are changing their position and that position's change can be measured in eto seconds. Can be measured in eto seconds. Okay. So therefore, 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 what has happened? These three scientists, these three scientists, what they have done, what they have done, okay, 
they have actually they have actually they have actually uh, studied the movement of these electro uh, basically what they have done actually they have produced the pulses of light that last only at a second they have developed the flashes of light or they have developed the pulses of light and these flashes of light pulses of light just exist for at a second and by this particular thing what we can do we can study the movement of electrons it will help us to study the movement of electrons and by such change now understand this particular thing in a way it will help us to study the change at a very very rapid level and by this particular thing we will further be able to enhance our understanding for example this particular study can be used to understand the molecular level changes that are happening in blood at a very fast rate and by that particular thing our ability to identify disease will improve also by this particular thing a lot of electronic uh, the a lot of applications of such kind of a thing will be there in electronics fine they will become really fast it will help in medical diagnostics okay so this is the development that they have done now there is one anecdote also that has been given by the royal swedish academy of science and from there i have taken it up so it says this thing that see when a hummingbird or any bird is flapping the wings human eye cannot catch that particular movement of the wings just we see a blur just we see a blur or let's say there is a fan when you see the fan fan which is moving at a high speed you just see a kind of a blur but if we witness it and under a very high speed high shutter speed camera we can actually see the movement how it is happening okay so basically uh, when you further slow it down fine and when you break it to the eto seconds you can also see step by step step by step movement of electrons okay so this is the contribution of these three scientists and when we talk about l huler l huler she is the fifth woman who have been awarded the physics prize since 1901 so again i'll just explain in one line i will just explain in one line that why they have been given the nobel prize they have been given nobel prize for using ultra quick ultra quick light flashes and these ultra quick light flashes they just exist for an eto second and by this particular development it will be possible to study electrons inside atom and molecules okay and by such rapid pace study by such rapid sub atomic level change if we can study that we can also use this particular application in many medical fields okay so this is guys all about it okay now uh, i have tried to simplify this particular concept okay in order to ensure that even the students from humanities background who might not have that much science background can understand this particular thing one more thing beyond this you need not to go and need not to read anything because upsc doesn't goes in that much hairline details okay moving on to the next article moving on to the next article okay so we have one article here article talks about uh, article talks about circular migration looking at both sides of the debate now this particular article guys we will take with respect to gs paper number 1 social issues within the social issues there is one particular topic of urbanization and within urbanization this particular topic of circular migration we can take okay circular migration now moving on first of all let's understand that what this particular word circular migration means now first of all what does the word migration means in general so migration means the movement or relocation of people from an origin place to the destination place for example let's say a person belongs a person is native of rajasthan and he has come to delhi and got settled in delhi so this is migration this is movement of this person from origin place to the destination place origin place is rajasthan and destination place is delhi now when we talk about migration this article is talking about circular migration now what is circular migration it is a mig it is a kind of a migration where a person moves from origin to destination where a person moves from origination to destination then again comes back to origin then again goes to that destination place then again comes to origin basically we see this particular thing that there are many type of seasonal employments that exist in urban areas and people to just to take advantage of these seasonal employment they are coming in urban areas so this is a circular migration circular migration now understand this particular thing what happens 
इट इज अ फिनोमिना इन विच पीपल इन द लो इनकम ग्रुप लो इनकम ग्रुप लार्जली आर मूविंग टू द न्यू सिटी टू न्यू स्टेट जस्ट टू गेट द सीजनल एम्प्लॉयमेंट और सीजनल जॉब नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट सर्कुलर माइग्रेशन सर्कुलर गाइज माइग्रेशन हैज एक्चुअली बिकम इंपॉर्टेंट एट द वर्ल्ड प्लेस एंड इवन पीपल ऑफ हाई स्किल्स दे आर डूइंग सर्कुलर माइग्रेशन विद इन द कंट्रीज विद इन द कंट्रीज एंड पोस्ट नाइनटीन सिक्सटीज एंड सेवेंटीज सर्कुलर माइग्रेशन हैज बिकम क्वाइट पॉपुलर because of globalization and rapid development that has come because of such globalization and rapid development there are large economic opportunities which are seasonal which are available in a particular region for a particular time and therefore people go there avail that economic opportunity and come back again and when again that economic opportunity will be there they will go back okay now when we talk about regional uh, when we talk about circular migration according to united nation economic commission for europe task force they say circular migration is there if there are at least two loops between two countries okay so they are talking about international level circular migration so for example now what are these two loops for example this is your for example this is the origin country i moved to destination i came back okay then again i moved to destination country and again i came back so if there are two loops okay of migration this is called as circular migration at international level according to united nation economic commission for europe task force okay now when we talk about guys migration in general not circular migration migration in general has increased a lot in the last 30 to 40 years particularly post 60s and 70s and we see that in international migration there is a typical pattern that countries or the people from global south now global south are those countries which are developing countries so people from global south they are moving to west particularly the countries such as america and europe in the search of better employment now these this kind of a migration will be a long term migration where a person will go and for a large period for a long period will stay there now these kind of a migrations have become a political debate okay they have become debatable why these they have become debatable because first of all for the origin country it creates the problem of brain drain it creates the problem of brain drain for example iitians going to america going to europe okay so it leads to problem of brain drain and secondly what happens it also creates competition for the citizens in the destination country okay their citizens they will say that we are not able to get job because outsiders had come and have taken away their jobs is it clear or not so this is something particularly guys when we talk about permanent migration even internal permanent migration for example people from a particular state of india coming to delhi okay that particular thing has also become debatable why because it results to the breakdown of infrastructure in the destination place okay and secondly it leads to the agrarian stagnation in that particular region from where a person has migrated for example a person of bihar coming to delhi if very large number of people will come the infrastructure of delhi will fall short and at the same time home also there will be the agriculture stagnation that comes okay so this is one particular problem that comes so therefore it has become a policy hazard and in this direction circular migration circular migration is a win win for both why win win for both because as this migration is not permanent a person will eventually come back and as a person will eventually come back he will contribute in the agriculture of that place he will also become the productive labor of the uh, origin place and as there are frequent demand when he is going to the destination place there also whatever the labor demand is he will be able to meet that okay and also as he is going to stay for a very short period of time also infrastructural breakdown will not happen so therefore circular migration is often called as the win win situation for all win win situation for all okay and it has been the way forward moreover it also says that by circular migration within the countries rather the brain drain it leads to the brain circulation it leads to the brain circulation okay so this is something now when we talk about internal migration particularly the circular migration so basically guys it has been provided that post 2004 5 okay 2004 5 2011 12 this is the period when the construction sector boomed and as the construction sector boomed large number of people from rural areas they visited and they came to the urban areas and actually they got settled for a long period of time it led to the collapse of it led to uh infrastructural collapse in these recipient states okay moreover it has also been provided that because of long term migration that has happening 
okay now this long term migration is also responsible because of uneven development of the country okay some regions became developed properly some regions were not properly developed for example if we see because of uneven development under developed states such as odisha bihar and relatively less developed state west west bengal they became they became the states with highest rate of out migration highest rate of out migration okay now one positive side is there of this migration is that when the people are reaching to the other states okay they com comparably get high paying jobs they comparably get high paying jobs also when they will be working in other states they will send the remittances back home these remittances can also be used by their family members to demand goods to live a better quality of life and all such kind of a thing now today when we talk about migration in india we find this particular thing that actually migration from out migrating states it is going to the different different part of countries particularly the metropolitans but now a considerable migration is also happening towards the southern part of country such as kerala such as kerala tamil nadu but as these migrations are happening to the southern states there is always there is always a language barrier that comes in between and because of that language barrier the people who are migrating to southern states they are often dependent at the mercy of middlemen or brokers and these middlemen brokers they are often exploitative in nature okay and because of this particular thing always what happen they are working for low wages they don't have bargaining power okay and also the quality of jobs is not very much good there okay many states in this direction are actually coming out and they are giving certain reforms to the migrant worker for example kerala for example kerala recently came out with the avaaz health scheme avaaz health scheme okay for the migrant workers so this is largely a kind of an overview about the migration trends and migration patterns across india okay so this is all about this particular article and now moving on to the next article moving on to the next article okay nati shiv shankar mercy means sir uh, dear mercy means daya upkar the shutdown of afghan embassy the shutdown of afghan embassy okay now the shutdown of afghan embassy okay so this particular article guys will see with respect to gs paper number 2 international affairs india afghan relations india afghanistan relations so basically so basically what has happened uh, recently islamic republic of afghanistan okay islamic republic of afghanistan's embassy closed down in delhi now you need to understand two things basically one is that guys afghanistan was over kept overpowered by taliban and it was captured by taliban in 2021 now taliban before 20 oh, sorry afghanistan before 2021 which has a presidential form of government that afghanistan pre 2021 afghanistan it was called as islamic republic of afghanistan however after taliban after taliban they have changed the name of afghanistan and today afghanistan under taliban is called as islamic emirate of afghanistan islamic emirate of afghanistan so whose embassy has closed down embassy of islamic republic of afghanistan that is afghanistan pre 2021 their embassy has been closed down in india now when we talk about guys uh, when we talk about this particular embassy okay this particular embassy okay this particular embassy was working was working as a stateless mission in india it was working as a stateless mission is in india why stateless mission because simply this earlier government is not represented in the afghanistan now now two things you need to understand two things you need to understand that as taliban has taken over afghanistan we don't recognize taliban as a legitimate government and we also don't have the direct diplomatic channels with the taliban also do back track diplomacy with taliban has started but we don't maintain direct diplomacy with taliban and we don't recognize it okay so understand this particular thing the embassy that was going on was the embassy of earlier government islamic republic of afghanistan okay 
Now this particular embassy was just performing a ceremonial role, a symbolic role, and was helping the Afghan citizens in India as well as travelers in India to pass on and to do the diploma uh, to to complete the documentation work and all such kind of a thing. It was helping, but because it did not had resources and also it said that it was not getting a cooperation by the government, so they have to close down their operations. Now this. Now understand, along with this embassy, there are also two consulates that are there in India, and these two consulates are in Hyderabad and Mumbai. There are these are in Hyderabad and Mumbai. Now consulates are small than a than an embassy. In embassy, there will be a full diplomatic mission that will be there, but in consulates, there are few officials. So these consulates in Hyderabad and Mumbai, as of now, they will continue, but the embassy has been closed down. Now. Understand this particular thing, guys. That uh, when we talk about the Afghanistan present Taliban rule in Afghanistan, it's not the case that we are not coordinating with them in any capacity. There is a technical team of India that is maintained in Kabul, and it is providing the visas to Afghan traders. Also, the travelers who want to come to India in a limited capacity, they are providing help to them. Also, as of now, also there are two weekly flights. Between India and Afghanistan, which carry Afghan citizens and Afghan goods, Afghan items to India. But as of now, full cooperation is not going on with the Taliban. Okay, now Taliban's representatives, Taliban's representatives, and India, they have came together under Moscow format dialogue and many such kind of a platform. Okay, and the Taliban want the recognition from more and more countries, and in this particular direction. Taliban is also seeking to get recognition from India, but as of now, India has not given recognition to Taliban. Many other countries, for example, China, it has given recognition to Taliban, and China also has sent a diplomat, fine, into the Kabul. Okay, but India as of now is not maintaining any kind of a relations. Now, Taliban is also urging India to help them in economic revitalization. For example, they want that India should support them for developing electricity generation project, road building project, fine. But as of now, India has not indicated any position on Taliban. Okay, so this is, guys, all the latest development with respect to Afghanistan and India. Okay, so right now, as Taliban is there, we don't recognize that. Okay, so this is all about this article. Now, moving to next article. Using artificial intelligence for audit technique. Okay, now this particular article we'll see with respect to GS paper number three, emerging technologies. GS paper number three emerging technologies. Okay, now so basically, basically what has happened? So recently, CAG of India, that is Controller Auditor General. So Controller Auditor General of India, Mr. Girish Chandra Murmu, has warned this thing that artificial intelligence has become a buzzword. Artificial intelligence has become a kind of a prevalent word nowadays. And everywhere we are talking about deploying AI, but AI in auditing of government accounts, AI in auditing of government accounts can pose certain challenges. So therefore, if we are considering bringing the artificial intelligence in government auditing, we need to be very cautious. We need to be very careful in this particular direction. We also need to consider that ethics of AI is also to be considered. Now, understand this particular thing. When we talk about guys artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has been alleged for many unethical things. For example, it is said that artificial intelligence, particularly the generative artificial intelligence, it is violating the ethics of copyright. Let's understand how. For example, for example, there are many generative AI platforms. For example, Chat GPT, it can generate text. There is one platform, Mid Journey, it can generate photographs and pictures. For example, you go on Mid Journey and you say. May uh, make a picture of dog sitting on Mount Everest. It will generate that particular picture. Now understand this particular thing. That mid journey, actually the way it is creating these pictures and painting, it is working and it has actually got inspired by the work of some previous artists. Are you getting it or not? For example, Chat GPT, the way it is giving you answer, the way it is inspired from some earlier authors that have been there. So it is said that these uh, generative AI they infringe copyright. They infringe copyright. Okay, 
and to regulate ai regulate ai european parliament recently has come out with european union artificial intelligence act okay and under this chat gpt will be put under greater restrictions and greater scrutiny and the developers they have to submit fine from time to time the chat gpt's base code for review okay moreover it is also being provided that often the artificial intelligence it also has many biases inherent in it now understand one particular thing basically guys artificial intelligence okay we'll talk about it in a minute let's understand what intelligence is your intelligence is based on all the information that you have learned in the past okay in the same way artificial intelligence will be based on a lot of data that will be fed into that algorithm now who is creating the data who is generating the data humans are generating data humans have a lot of stereotypes biases in them so therefore the data that are being generated by humans they also have stereotypes and biases in them and as that data is being fed in ai ai also has its own biases stereotypes and this has been seen multiple number of a times multiple number of a times for example if you remember few weeks back we have taken one particular article where we have seen this particular thing that one generative platform was asked to show the picture of doctors okay and what happened all the pictures of doctor were of white men white men they then gave a prompt to show the f doctors of uh, pictures of african doctors pictures of african doctor even then what happened white men they were taking care of black people white men taking care of black people okay and after putting so many of prompts what happened a picture was made where a white man was wearing african dress but he still he was pretty so photograph of black doctor was not there this shows the biases even in the ai artificial intelligence okay and because of many number of times wrong information misguided information is is also being given by these chat gpts and generative ai so elon musk wants to develop truth gpt which is a truth seeking ai which will avoid biases which will give the fair and correct information okay now when we talk about ai for ai regulation recently prime minister of uk mr rishi sunak said this thing that uk wants to become the geographical home for ai safety regulation okay now article says this particular thing that india needs to take lesson from european union and india should also come out with the architecture to regulate artificial intelligence and then article specifically is mentioning that what is the problem that will come if artificial intelligence is adopted in auditing such as if ai is being adopted by cag's office controller auditor general of india's office okay so what problems will be there so let's discuss them one by one so what challenges will come before cag number 1 number 1 okay as artificial intelligence is based on a lot of data big data article so says this particular thing that audits of government accounts cannot be based on big data from unauthorized sources unauthorized sources first of all if you are using ai you need to ensure the sources from where the ai is collecting data okay those sources need to be credible those sources need to be proven that ai in auditing cannot just use any random data only government credible and authenticated data should be used so this one thing we need to care second thing is that guys now when you are using ai to compile the audit data you will take data from many different different state governments you will take data from many different different government departments now many governments many departments many states they are keeping data in different different formats so all the data is to be compiled in a single format okay and for that particular thing cag already is coming out with one indian audit and account department one system which will be a web enabled it application which will support multiple languages and all the data will be converted in one format so this is something that needs to be taken up then next thing the next thing that is to be ensured is that see when we talk about it ai systems artificial intelligence systems ai ai in uh, ai structures there are many different different kind of ai designs that are there many different different kinds of ai architecture are there so we need to define that which ai design which architecture which platform will be used okay so that is something that needs to be taken care of and after that after that auditors who are using ai auditors who are using ai their capacity building has to be done so that they can use ai effectively and they should also be capable enough to identify if there are some wrong output is being given by ai so fine auditors which are going to use ai their capacity is also to be built and 
एट द सेम टाइम एट द सेम टाइम फाइन ए आई ऑडिट असाइनमेंट ए आई ऑडिटर्स दे नीड टू कंसल्ट विद डेटा साइंटिस्ट डेटा इंजीनियर डेटा आर्किटेक्ट ए आई स्पेशलिस्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड द ए आई प्लेटफॉर्म मोर इफेक्टिवली ओके दिस इज समथिंग एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन वी कैन ऑल्सो टेक द हेल्प फ्रॉम सम ग्लोबल स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ ए आई ऑडिटिंग दैट हैज बीन डेवलप्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू एस गवर्नमेंट यू एस गवर्नमेंट दे हैव डेवलप्ड अकाउंटेबिलिटी ऑफिस फ्रेमवर्क ओके फॉर ऑडिटिंग एंड यूजिंग ए आई इन ऑडिटिंग वी कैन लर्न फ्रॉम देम ओके सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल फाइन आई होप गाइज दैट यू हैव अंडरस्टूड इट एंड नाउ मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल The triumph of Vachati over a hostile state. The triumph of Vachati over a hostile state. Now, guys, uh, frankly speaking, you need not to go too much in detail in this particular article. Let me explain you the premise of this particular article. So, this article is actually talking about the Vachati judgment that has recently been given by the Madras High Court. What is this particular case? So, basically, in 1992. Around 300 uniformed officials, policemen, what they did, they unleashed violence in the village of a Tamil Nadu on the pretext of unearthing the smuggled sandalwood. Okay, so basically, it was said that innocent tribal people they were attacked, women were raped, atrocities were committed on them, many people they were arrested, children were also arrested. Okay, okay, and this particular, this particular. humanitarian crisis continued for so many of the days okay on this particular on this particular uh, violence that was committed the case was filed and recently madras high court has given a judgment and said that human right violation of the people of vachati was carried in tamil nadu and it was said that this particular thing happened under the watch of the government and they said this particular thing that this deliberately happened to safeguard the actual smugglers to actual smugglers okay to save them this particular thing has happened okay and government also did not did anything rather government actually has a had a, a government actually had given approval to say such kind of a thing this ruling has been given by the madras high court now basically article it is then giving the step by step account that on which date attack uh, on which date this repression happened how many days it continued then who filed a petition in court then judgment went on for these nearly 30 years all the detail is given which is not important article is also saying this particular thing that many number of a time repression on many of the movements happened for example anti sterlite protest are going on now what is this anti sterlite protest so sterlite uh, there is a sterlite copper plant in tamil nadu now that copper plant is shut down okay so again so that there was this anti sterlite protest that were carried student protests are carried for example in jnu there is a bulldozer raj going on in uttar pradesh so it is being said that this particular judgment can be a template for all these kind of a breakdowns which are being done by the state approval okay so this is something that has been given however beyond this nothing much important substance is there in this article moving on to the next article now icmr project to accelerate cancer screening measures we'll see this particular article with respect to gs paper number 2 issues related to health okay now so this article is talking about the lack of cancer screening in india now when we talk about cancer cancer is a very big health challenge for india when we talk about cancer prevalence in india so india ranks third in cancer incidence so highest cancer incidence is there in china united states and after china and us on third number there is india and also according to global cancer observatory projections according to global cancer observatory it is said that there will be 57.5% increase in cancer cases between 2020 to 2040 so there is a huge cancer burden on india but at the same time cancer detection early screening of cancer and cancer treatment is not proper in india so therefore we need to build capacity so early detection early screening can be done so in this particular capacity icmr that is indian council for medical research it is looking ways that how the coverage and quality of cancer screening can be improved in india so it is asking consultation it is looking on that particular way and icmr specifically has emphasized that local communities should be encouraged now to target population to undergo screening early diagnosis and treatment and in this capacity they have provided that asha workers asha workers 
that is accredited social health activities activists they are going to play a very important role they can nudge people in rural areas that they should go for early screening test cancer screening for example when we talk about women okay many of the women they a uh, large number of women are prone to breast cancers okay so early detection early detection can be helped by these asha workers so this is something that is there okay moreover it is also provided that for cancer home screening home screening should be carried but it should take in account the privacy and convenience of the individuals also okay moving on to next article toilet use declining uh, declining in rural india since 2018 19 world bank paper so basically what has happened world bank world bank they has really they have released a progress paper on swachh bharat mission gramin now under swachh bharat mission government has constructed toilets government has nudged people to use that toilet and not to go for open defecation now this world bank consultation paper it provides that though large number of toilets have been considered con constructed under the swachh bharat mission and the access of toilets for the rural india has increased since 2014 and 15 but since 2018 19 the usage of toilet has going down particularly usage of toilet among a scheduled caste and scheduled tribe people that is going down and it goes against the government claims that open defecation has been ended and manual scavenging has been ended although 100 million toilets have been constructed in india but still the toilet usage is going down since 2018 19 as per the world bank document okay now understand this thing of full fledged question on this particular thing will obviously not come but when you are writing on the success of swachh bharat mission or when you are writing on the sanitation in india you can quote these particular reports that for example according to recently released working paper by world world bank usage of toilet has went down if you are critically analyzing this particular thing so government needs to be more active government needs to be more vigilant to to see that actually toilets are being used okay moving on after election muizu repeats uh, his promise of ousting indian forces so guys we have seen that few days back maldives has seen the presidential election where Maldives has chosen Mohammad Muizu as the new president and he has replaced the earlier president Mr Ibu Soli now when we talk about the former president who has now been replaced he was sympathetic to india and has supported indian project in maldives but when we talk about mohammad muizu he comes from the political party that is ppm and mohammad muizu's political party they were behind the india out campaign india out campaign now under india out campaign they say that india is indian forces are present in maldives and it is impacting the sovereignty of maldives and they want that indian forces should go out of maldives okay so mr muizu's political party has been the supporter of india out campaign and just 2 3 days back when we have seen this article we have seen this dimension also that now this dimension will become important that what will be the mr muizu's strategy for india is going to be and now mr muizu had said this particular thing that he will stick to his campaign and will remove indian military personnel who are stationed in maldives okay uh, so this particular thing has been taken up now when we talk about guys maldives maldives is an important location in indo pacific and basically the india even the western countries such as the us they have a very important interest in maldives and very carefully this particular development will be overlooked also this particular thing has been seen that ppm which is the political party of mr muizu who has got elected as a president and his this party's chief that was the former president abdullah yamun they were openly they were openly against india and they are very much close to china they are very much close to china and this is also being said that now what will happen many of the projects many of the projects in maldives will be handed over to china okay so this is something that is there however in days to come we'll see that how the maldives foreign policy and how the new president of maldives is going to behave okay that is about it now taking up the main practice question for today so question for today treats what do you mean by circular migration why there has been a huge flow of migrant from 
rural areas to urban cities in recent years. Okay, so this will be the GS paper, uh, GS paper number one and marker question. Okay, that is all guys about it. I hope that you have come to an end. And one more thing I want to tell you that in the articles I have given little bit of extra information also to support the article. Okay, so please download the synoptic notes and follow them. So that is all guys about it. And with this, we come to an end to the today's session. We'll be meeting tomorrow. Till then, please take care of yourselves. And guys, if you have liked the video, please do hit like button. Thank you so much.